Hello everybody, welcome to Naresh IT. Today we are going to have another session on verbal ability. And today's topic is, as you can see, para jumbles or rearrangement of sentences. What is para jumbles? You have paragraphs given or you have three, four sentences in random order. And you have to arrange that in a particular sequence so that it looks as if you're telling a story or you're reading a story. So here, it's a very high scoring section in verbal ability. And uh, again, it's not necessary you have to be a good reader to do this section. Only thing is you have to understand the sentences, understand the order, apply the logic, and voila, you're done. You, you can crack this section. So here, you have a list of, again, approaches to solve para jumbles. We'll start with the first approach, a very simple approach, that is article approach. Now, what do you mean by article approach? You know the articles. There are three articles, a, an, and the, or the. So, when we use the article approach, the rule behind this is, whenever you are, we are talking about something for the first time, we use a or an. And when we are talking about the same thing for the second time, or we already know what we are talking about, then we use the. For example, I bought a pen. When I say I bought a pen, that means I'm talking about the pen for the first time, and that's why I say a pen. And now when I talk about the same pen for the second time, I see the pen was costly. Now here I would not say a pen was costly because I know which pen I'm talking about, the pen that I bought and so I see the pen was costly. So here when we're talking about the article approach, the rule that defines here is when you're talking about something for the first time, it's a or an. And when you're talking about the same thing for the second time, we use the. So here when you have multiple sentences, you should realize if it's a or an, that means the sentence will come top in order. And if it's the, then it would come last in order. So that's the article approach. Let's move on to the second approach, the noun-pronoun approach. Now, what do you mean by noun-pronoun approach? So here, usually, when we're talking about something for the first time, we usually use a noun. And we're talking about the same thing for the second time. Then we don't use the noun normally, but we use a pronoun instead. For example, we say, now the first time I'm talking about Sita, so I say Sita is coming. So here, I'm using the noun as it is. Now, if I wanted to say something further about Sita, so here, rather than saying Sita is coming tomorrow, I would not say it like that. So here, so instead of Sita, I use she here. She is a pronoun. So the same rule applies whenever we're using a noun and a pronoun, when we have both in a sentence, we use the noun first and the pronoun follows. So the one, the sentence which has a pronoun, which would not, uh, will not come first, but it would come second in the order. So this goes for other pronouns also, like for example, he, she, uh, her, him, it, anything. So this is the second approach. The third one is the demonstrative pronoun approach. Now what are demonstrative pronouns? You may have used it many times in your life, but you will not know or you will not remember that these are demonstrative pronouns. So we say this, that, these, those. So if you remember this, when we are talking about singular subjects, which are near to us. So for example, I say this marker. And if something that is far to me or farther from me, then I will say that. So that will be that television. So here, this is for singular objects which are closer to you. And that is for singular objects farther from you. And the same way you have these and those. These are used for plural objects closer to you and those used for plural objects farther from you. So the same thing when you have demonstrative pronoun approach, you have nouns in the sentence. And for those nouns, when you use a demonstrative pronoun, this, that, these, those. So the rule is you will not use the demonstrative pronouns first. You use the nouns first and then you use the pronouns. And that depends on the number. So that is the demonstrative pronoun approach. Now we'll move on to the next point. Now, what do you understand by example approach? So here what happens is, usually we give examples for sentences. 
Like for example, there are many car manufacturers in India. That's one sentence. The second sentence is like. I say Volvo, Maruti, Suzuki. I give different examples for that. So here, I would not use the example first or the example sentence would not come first in order. So here I would say the manufacturers of different cars, that would be my first statement and the examples that I would give would follow in that order. So it will never be in the first of orders. So that is the example approach. Now we will move on to the next point that is now acronym approach. What do you mean by acronym? We know that acronym means short form or abbreviation. So how do we identify an acronym in a sentence? It's very simple. I'll give you two examples here. You'll get it very clearly. So the first one is, okay, if you look at my sentence, Narendra Modi is the Prime Minister. And in the second one, the Prime Minister belongs to BJP. So here if you look at it, in the first sentence I say Prime Minister and I'm using Prime Minister in full. I'm not using in an abbreviated form. But in the second sentence, I use the Prime Minister. So I'm shortening the Prime Minister and I'm using an abbreviation or an acronym for that. So here, the sentence would not be the Prime Minister belongs to BJP and Narendra Modi is the Prime Minister. So the one where we use the words in the full form, that will be the first in order and the one when, which we use in the acronym or the abbreviated form comes lower in the order. So this is the acronym approach. Uh, the next point in parajumbles is uh, sequence approach. What do we mean by sequence approach? Now you know you have, you are given multiple sentences say one, two, three, four, or you can say sometimes it's more than four. So usually if you have a particular order, now you do not know which order to go. So what you do is you read the f all the sentences first. So here you have a rough idea or you can have a rough guess, okay, this should be the first uh, sentence. So if you think uh, sentence one is first and uh, what you do here is look at the options given to you in answers. For example, the options are, let's take three, these three examples, okay? So you think the first one, the first sentence has to be first in order. Now, the moment you do that, you look at the options given to you. So you look at all three, so one, two, three. So if you are pretty sure that the first sentence is going to be the first in order, you don't have to look at any other sentence in the order. So what you do is, because in the answers given to you, only in these three choices, only one has one as the first order. So you know that your approach is right. So here this is called the sequence approach. You don't have to look for any other sentence and you say, okay, it goes with one. So my answer is one, two, three, four, five. It's in that order. So this is called the sequence approach. Now next is time sequence approach. What do you mean by time sequence approach? So you, you know you have words later, after, then and uh, you're given a year or you're given some time, two years later, 1945. So whenever you have these kind of numbers available in your sentences, obviously the information would follow in the latter part of the sentences. So when you have one, two, three, four, five sentence, and in one sentence you talk about a freedom struggle, it happened in this year. So the subsequent events or the sentences that follow, it'll tell you about what happened in 1945 or after 1945. So that is called a time sequence approach. So you look at the number given to you and obviously the information that is provided would follow that number and not before that. You cannot say, you cannot give all the information and say this happened in this year. So usually you start with it happened in this year and this is what happened. So that is called the time sequence approach. And the eighth one is keyword approach. Now, we mean keyword approach, by keyword approach we mean that we have keywords given in a sentence or in a, uh, they appear in two sentences together. So usually if that happens, we use the sentences in that particular order. So it's like one, two, three. So if the keywords, if any particular word is approaching or appearing twice in the sentences, so they will follow a uh, consecutive order and there would not be any gap in those orders. So that is called the keyword approach. Okay. The next in line is opening and closing sentence approach. By this we mean that you are given a sentence. For example, Mr. A is feeling better today and then you say he was admitted 
in the hospital and the doctors said this about him. So here what we know about it is like we are, ta we are all talking about Mr. A here. So obviously we talk about what he is or how he is or what his condition is. So we say Mr. A is feeling better today. So after that we will say why is he feeling better or what makes us think that he is feeling, feeling better today. So we say he was admitted in hospital. So that all would be coming later. But first is what is his condition. So that is what we call as an opening and closing sentence approach where you will have a key sentence and based on that the entire information is given. So we have these as the first of sentence and they will not come in the last order. So they will be in the rearrangement of sentences. They will be either in the first or second order but not last. And like when we say closing sentence approach like usually we say we give a story or we give a few sentences. And lastly we say and finally this is what happened. So when you are talking about words like finally, lastly, later, in the end. So for these words you will not have these as the opening sentences. You will usually have these as the closing sentences. So this is what is called the opening and closing sentence approach. Next is transition words approach. Now here this is very simple but you have to know what the transition words are. So if you are aware of it then it becomes easier for you to bring down the order or arrange the order. So transition words are for example I say but, if, then, only. So here we know that some change is happening here. Then at that time we know okay but, if, then, only we cannot have this in the first part of the sentences and then give the reason there. We will say this happened but this was the reason. For example. If I say I have to go to work today but it is raining heavily I may not go. So here obviously when you say but it is raining heavily I may not go that would not be the first sentence because here you are giving a reason why you would not go. So here these are called the transition words. So they usually follow a previous sentence or a statement and giving a justification that this is the reason why this is happening. So this is called the transition words approach. Now the next approach in order is contrasting words approach. Uh, what do we mean by con contrasting words approach? We usually have words like in spite of, despite, rather than, but. So these are contra contrasting words. You make a statement once and then you said but. Like it was raining heavily. In spite of that I went to the supermarket. So here in spite of that I went to the spa supermarket it was raining heavily. So it cannot be in reverse order. So usually when we have contrasting words they would not be uh, higher in order they would come lower in order. Next one is logical approach. Now here it is more about if you are not applying the rules when whenever we are solving parajumbles it is about applying logic. What you think is logically correct does it have any logic there to have these sentences in that particular order. Like according to your logic you can say it is 3, 2, 1, 4 somebody else's logic it can be 1, 2, 3, 4. So how well your logic is applied that matters a lot. So mostly what happens is it is not necessary that you are into the habit of reading. But if you try to analyze the sentences or understand the content of the sentences then it becomes easier for you to just apply your logic and say okay I think this comes first and this comes next. So that is called the logical approach but not necessarily that your logic should be true always. Because if you attempt the parajumbles in a verbal ability you will always see choose a sentence in the order which is logically correct. So where you think the logic applies then you frame your sentences or order your sentences accordingly. So that is called the logical approach. Now here there are so many approaches now it is very difficult to remember all these approaches. So what happens here is you need to practice it as far as possible. So just remembering the approaches and solving parajumbles is not going to help you. What you have to do here is for example if you want to improve your parajumble activity take two parajumbles for a day and try to apply these approaches and then go through the answers and see where you are going wrong. If uh, you find one particular order which is wrong or probably you have all the orders right but one order you are going wrong. That means you need to work on that particular approach. So parajumbles is not a difficult topic in verb verbal ability at all. It all depends on how you approach it and what all are the rules that you apply and how you solve this section. 
and believe me it's very easy because everything is there right before you you just have to keep it in the right order place it in the right order and that shouldn't be a difficult thing for you so wish you all the best and uh, go para jumping <music>